All righty, here we are. Got the session going. This is a band from a while back. I didn't record these this session. I've recorded this band quite a few times, but I didn't record this one here. Um, it's pretty good here and there, but it's got some issues, right? I want to concentrate uh, on the drums, right? Uh, and then we'll kind of move on to some other stuff, right? So we're going to EQ, right? So I'm going to let me solo these drums right here. I think everything's ready. Okay, so the kick and snare sound pretty good, right? But uh, there's, man, those overheads are rough. So it's that one overhead that's actually over the hi-hat area. Again, I don't know how they mic'd it, but uh, it's pretty rough. And I suspect it ha it's not so much the miking technique. I think it's the mics that they were using. I see right here. Uh, where is it? Somewhere in here. Uh, do -do 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 -do. I don't know, somewhere there's, they're using some really bad mics. It sounds like some really cheap old mics that they got like at Guitar Center or something like that, rather than something good, right? I see over here that they're using a U87 for the kit, right? I think this one's in front of the kick drum. To me, it kind of sounds like that. Uh, these here are 4050s, Audio Technicas, which we have at ACC. But, um... Why they didn't use those good mics <laughs> for the overheads, I don't know. These sound like really cheapo condensers, right, for the overheads. Anyway, let's listen. They're that really, that, that hi-hat area, that mic has got this really hard biting sound, right? That doesn't sound too bad. Ouch. I'm going to adjust something right quick here. Uh, turn this guy down a little bit. There we go. There we go. So it'll be a little bit more balanced. You can adjust it in your, right? There we go. There's the mouse. There we go. So let's go ahead and tame that. Let's find it. Again, I'm going to use the Seek and Destroy. Uh, i come over here and go plug in one band EQ, right? Let me grab this guy and move it over. So it's obviously way up high. I'm thinking maybe 8K, somewhere like that. Let's try some Seek and Destroy. Again, I'm going to take this guy here, the Q, right? I'm zeroing, I'm narrowing the Q a little bit, right? Let's push play. Yeah. As a matter of fact, uh, instead of using a uh, peak dip, why don't we just go ahead and shelf that, right? I'm going to come over here, use a shelf EQ. So everything above that is going to get turned down. Sounds better. Okay, so you might be thinking, well, the, the symbol, the sound of the overheads is not going to sound so good anymore. Well, you're right. So this is all about compromise, right? And so, no, the overheads won't sound as good. Um, but um, um, 
we, we can't annoy the listener. <laughs> that, that hi-hat cannot sound like that in a recording, in a mix, right? So we've got to fix that problem. We're going to have to sacrifice a little bit of the overheads, but that's okay, right? At least people won't be annoyed. They're like, ah, terrible. I'm going to pull it back like that. Let's bypass it. Yeah, uh, that's rough. So because I want the overheads to sound the same left and right, I'm going to go ahead and take this guy here, this EQ, and I'm going to copy it over to the uh, to the other track, to the other overhead, right? Even though the other overhead doesn't sound as annoying, uh, they kind of need to have the same kind of sound. So I'm going to copy that over. I'm going to hold the option down and just drag it. So option drag, if you guys remember, or alt drag in Windows, uh, is means copy something, right? So let's listen to both of those overheads. Here we go. Way better. All right, so let's listen to those overheads with, uh, well, let's just go over here, All right? Let's go ahead and solo the kit. Actually, let's listen to that kick, the kit mic, the ones in front of the kick, I, uh, kit. Yeah, you can kind of hear it's sort of really more about the kick drum more than anything else, right? Let's tame the let's tame the high end on that a little bit as well. As a matter of fact, how about if I just copy that over there? Let's see what happens. Let's bypass it. In Pro Tools, you bypass it by either holding Command and you click on the Mac or Control and click. Let me uh, let me tell you, the shortcuts in Pro Tools. Those of you who have Pro Tools are going to buy Pro Tools. The the shortcuts are um, the Command key on the Mac maps to the control key in Windows. The option key on the Mac maps out to the alt key on Windows, right? And then what would be the control key, any shortcut that uses the control key on the Mac, uh, uh, that maps out to the Windows key or the start key in Windows, right? That's kind of the, that's how they work. Anyway, here we go. I'm going to bypass that. You know, I don't like that. There's like this weird sound. So I'm going to get rid of that with a second EQ. Now you might think, Dan, why don't you just use an EQ that has five bands or four bands? I could, but I'm in kind of in the habit when I'm using a DAW to solve one problem and then solve another problem with a different, with another EQ rather than having like a four band EQ. Either way, it doesn't really matter. Here's my EQ, my one band. I'm going to, again, seek and destroy, right? That's control and shift on the keyboard here, right? Let me narrow that up a little bit. I'm going to get rid of that kind of sound. That. Bypass it. Yeah. You see what's going on there? Right? Getting rid of that kind of, just getting rid of annoying stuff. That's the, the main thing. Get rid of the annoying stuff. All right? So there we go. So let's see how this plays with the overheads. See how that works, right? So let me pull these guys in. That does sound cool, right? So that adds quite a bit. All right, we'll leave it. And here's the room mics. Let's listen to see what these room mics sound like here. All right? Solo these guys here. Notice the same 
right? Uh, let's get rid of some of that super high annoying stuff, right? And let's go back here. One band EQ. I'm thinking a shelf might work just fine, right? So I'm going to solo just that one, this guy. my shelf there we go just adjusting here listen to how those sound now. Ooh, kind of cool. All right, so now what I'm going to I'm going to throw in the kick drum see what happens. Here we go. So I'm listening, I'm thinking, crazy enough, you might think this is crazy, but I think there's a little bit too much low end in that kick drum, right? I'm going to pull some low end out of it, right? And I'm just going to use a high pass filter, right? Because I want the kick drum to be punchy, right? I don't want it to be kind of soft and fluffy. Here we go. Bypass. I'm going to leave it right there for the moment. All right? Let me listen. The drummer, he is beating that. So here we go. How about the snare? Let's see what the snare sounds like with everything, right? By the way, <clears throat> you guys probably know this, but when you're EQing stuff, <clears throat> excuse me, you want to EQ things uh, in context mostly, right? Uh, because no one's going to hear that kick drum by itself, right? In this in this band, right? It's the kick drum is being heard all in all those tracks, right? So what we want to do is <clears throat> listen to everything in context and then. If we really need to kind of tweak something, then we're, we're going to end up doing a soloing that one thing, adjusting it, and then listening in context again, right? So uh, let's hear that's how the snare sounds. Now, here's one thing that's kind of uh, messing this up a little bit, is that that snare, he's not consistent uh, with the snare, right? Sometimes he's... And it's not even so much a volume thing. It's kind of how he's hitting. He's kind of, it sounds like he's all, and I know this drummer. He was, uh, 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 he's kind of like a great wild, wild man, you know. And uh, when he was, <clears throat> when he was drumming, he was like all over the place. And so he's hitting that snare. Sometimes he's hitting it on the edge. Sometimes he's hitting it in the middle. Sometimes it's just it's very inconsistent. Not so much volume, but just the tone of it, right? Like right there, it doesn't sound so good. Right at first, it sounds cool. He's like whacking it right in the middle. It's just right. Good. Now it's kind of like...
<laughs> so uh, let's add a little bit of high end to it. Let's make it snap a little bit more, right? So what do we know? Where's snap, right? Well, you again, you can use that EQ chart, right? Or you can just listen, right? So I'm, I'm just going to add, again, I just want to, I think the snare actually sounds pretty good. I don't think there's anything annoying about it. So all I want to do is enhance it, right? So I'm going to add, I think, a little bit of high end to kind of make it poke out a little bit, right? Let's listen. Moving it around there. There you go. This is how it sounds, by the way. Here, here we go. All right. So I'll do all that. Let's just look at the snare by itself. Here it goes. That's what it sounds like just by itself. That sounds pretty bad, right? But in context, it doesn't sound bad at all because the snare, the snare sound in this in this recording is the combination of that and the overheads and the front mic and then the over the room mics and all that other stuff, right? I'm also gonna add a little bit of low end, a little bit of beef. Let's try that. Right. I don't know where that would be. Let's just try down here somewhere. And I'm going to narrow the cue a little bit, right? Actually, let's do this uh, seek and destroy. But instead of seeking and destroying, we're going to seek and find, <laughs> sneak and boost rather than sneak and destroy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for that resonant frequency in the body of the snare, right? Here we go. Ooh, like right there. Bypass. I kind of like that. All right. So let's see what happens when we listen to it, everything together. Here we go. So there we go. So let's let's listen to the bass, right? So typically what's going to end up happening is the bass is going to clash with the kick drum, right? So notice right there, right off the bat, if if we mute the bass, right? Oop, yeah, here we go. You can hear plenty of the kick drum, right? As soon as I put that bass in there. The bait the, the kick drum uh, gets sort of buried, right? So that's an EQ thing, right? So let's listen to this guy. Yeah, see, there's like a lot of low end there. You're thinking, well, bass needs to have a lot of low end. Nah. Especially this kind of bass. I wouldn't say this is a punk rock band. But it's kind of, you know, they have that attitude. This is, it kind of needs to have that thing anyway, right? So I'm going to get rid of some low end. And I'm not going to, I'm going to shelve it rather than uh, completely cut it out, right? So here we go. I'm going to listen. And I want to get rid of that low, shaky thing. That's super, super low. I'm going to get rid of that. That low note before, after. Let's see how that sounds with the drums now.
Oop, wrong one. <laughs> Sorry. So this guy, this bass right here is carrying the bottom end. Let's see what's going on here. Let's see what this is. No, we'll come back to that one. <laughs> that sounds okay. All right. Again, what I'm going through and hunting for is frequencies that's going to interfere with the bass and the kick drum. Oh, let me go over here. Where am I at? Ah, there we go. By the way, one of the guys that's playing, see if I can find him. Oh, this guy right here, Zach. This guy is a famous mixer dude now. This guy, Zach, was one of my former students. Zach was uh, a very quiet young man. He's actually played in a hardcore band long, long when he was in high school that actually got a, quite a bit of uh, notoriety. Zach... Um, Decided he would he would take classes, go to college like they uh, like his parents told him to, and he was a really good student, and and uh, he was very quiet, had really thick glasses, uh, um, but he ended up getting a gig with uh, a, he ended up getting a gig eventually at this at a club downtown that's no longer there, but he got this uh, gig there doing monitors, and. Uh, I can't remember the name of the band that came to some metal band came through and he did monitors for him and uh, uh, they loved what he did. And they said, hey, man, our monitor guy sucks. We want to hire you. <laughs> so he went with them. And uh, so it was a pretty well-known band. Again, I can't remember who it is, but they were doing like some kind of tour, like one like the Warp Tour or something like that. They were in, in Brazil. And he was he was doing monitors for this band. Another metal band, uh, their front of house guy got sick, and Zach they asked they you know th the band was like they didn't know what to do. Uh, the other band said, "Yeah, this guy Zach he does monitors for us. He he probably can do it." And so Zach did front of house for them, killed it. Right, word got around that Zach was the guy for metal, and uh, so now literally, and I'm not joking, he travels the world. He's a freelance engineer. He specializes in, in metal and hardcore, uh, and that's what he does. He travels the world and literally travels the world. <laughs> My buddy, who's a famous mixer dude, live sound mixer dude as well, uh, who's much older, like in my age, older, but uh, he and Zach see each other. They're traveling around the world. They see each other in the airports. It's kind of funny. It's like, hey, right? So... Uh, Let's hear what Zach's got to play here. All those guitar parts, those guitar parts sound pretty good. I don't, I don't know that I would mess with them much, right? All right, so there we go. Let's see how, let's see how these are meshing with everything else. Uh, da -da -da. Base, 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 base. There you go. Let's go over here.
Anyway, you guys get the idea. My battery's running real low. <laughs> it's about to die. So there's your EQ lesson. We'll have class. I'll send you guys a, a, a Google Meet invitation. We'll have class. I'll have these uploaded soon. Um, I'll talk to you soon. I uh, hope everything's going well. Bye-bye.